After talking to Mrs. Face, Frank and I had lunch. Then we drove to the address Mr. Hovig had given us. We followed him into the garage at the rear of his home. There, in that box. It's right where I found it. I didn't move it one inch. Now, you think everything in that box is stolen property, do you? Well, I don't know for sure. I don't think so. But in this cotton, that's where I found the silver that I gave to you. Uh-huh. Looks like it, all right. Sure does. When did you find this stuff, Mr. Hovig? Monday. I was neatening up this bunch of things, and I lifted that one with the string, and it broke. It turned over, and a piece of silver fell out. Well, I picked it up, and I noticed it had initials on it. I didn't recognize those initials. Then I didn't know, so I forgot to mention it. Mention it? At supper. But after they went to bed, I came out to lock up and I began to think about it. So I looked a little more in the box and I saw the lace and a picture of somebody that's not in the family. Yes, sir, we understand. Uh -huh. I never trusted that fellow the minute I looked at him. Now, who do you mean, Mr. Hovey? My son-in-law. Oh. My own son-in-law. You think he might know something about this, do you? Oh, I'm not accusing him. That's up to you fellas to accuse him. I'm only trying to do what's right. But when you tell my daughter, you leave me out of it. That's the whole idea. I want to be a good citizen and respect the law and everything. And my daughter might get the wrong idea. Yes, sir. Three months they're married and he loses his job. So Oza tells me, and since I want to do the right thing, I say, sure, come ahead. Move in here with me. I won't charge you any rent. So? So, when they moved in here, they brought this stuff with them, is that right? Yeah, that's right. This carton, too? Yeah. What day was this? Well, let's see. I think... What day is this? This is Wednesday. Well, that's right. Then it must have been Sunday that he brought it over. You're sure now? Yeah. I'm sure. Here I am. This lady has had some things stolen from her recently. Do you want to take a look through that carton? Which carton? Where? Where? Which right one? Right here, right here. Oh, oh, there it is. Yes, that's it. Oh, everything seems to be here all right. Well, men, have you got a line on the thief? We think so, yes. Oh, that's real great fast work, I must say. Oh, what's this gentleman's name? That's Mr. Hovig. You said you wouldn't give my name. Oh, yes, I saw it outside on the mailbox. Oscar, isn't it? Say, now, what's this all about? Oh, why does he look so upset? I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. What for? Because your property was stolen. Well, sure, thanks. But here you've gone and found it for me again, so no great harm done. Besides, the stuff wasn't worth much. It's just that you get mad when you see somebody taking it right from under your nose. I'm sorry. It was a terrible thing to do. What's with him? It's a family matter, Mrs. Face. What time is it? 1.45. Oh, I'll be coming home any minute. My son-in-law took Oza over to the doctor's at 1 o'clock. It's just over here in the burn building. And that's why you wanted us to be here at 1, so we wouldn't be around when he came back, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. But now, it doesn't matter. What kind of a car is he driving? His own car. A green car. With an L in the license number. How did you know that? Oh, sure. You saw it. You'd like to tell us about it, Mr. Hoving? He was a good boy. A fine boy. I didn't hate him. Not at all. I don't know why I did it. They love each other. He'd, he'd do anything to make her a good husband. I was like, I was crazy. I couldn't stand it to be alone. Even the piano. 
It's no good to play it unless there's somebody to listen. Even if they're not paying much attention, just moving around the house. It's nice to know that somebody is there. A year or two ago, my, my daughter began to have boyfriends. I talked to her. I, I told her that she had plenty of time. Uh, you don't go around with the boys when you're just a kid. I told her. And then Larry came along. He was working over at the service station. And then before I knew what was going on, they came to me and said they were getting married. I couldn't talk. It was just like when her mother died. I, what can you talk about? On the night they got married, it's strange. It, it wasn't so bad. We had some drinks, and after a while, I got to sleep. But then next morning, and every morning of every day since then, it's... What's the use of even getting out of bed? Who cares whether you're up or not? Uh, about ten days ago, Larry lost his job. It wasn't his fault. The boss over at the service station gave the job to his cousin or somebody, and so they came back here to live with me, and Larry said he'd, he'd help pay for the groceries and so on. Well, I, I didn't want his money. They moved their things over here and they stored them in the garage, is that right? Yeah. After they went to bed, I... I came out and I just stood here looking at those things. And the next morning, I felt terrible. Worse than before. They weren't here. And then I remembered that I told them they could have the station wagon and they were going out to the beach with another couple of... I really didn't care. I was feeling sorry for myself and them going off and taking my station wagon. You know? Yes, sir, I think so. Well, you know the rest. We'd like to have you tell us anyway, Mr. Hovig. Well, I had a music lesson over in Selma. And afterwards, I just sat in the car, his broken down old one, the green one. And then I saw this lady and another one unloading their car down the street. Cartons and things, and they reminded me of the ones in the garage. I thought if I grabbed one and put it with Larry's and then tell the police they'll say Larry's a thief. Even if anybody saw me, it didn't matter. It was Larry's car. They blame him. That's why you threw that glove out of the car, is that it? Yes. How could I do such a thing? I never did anything so wrong. Never. Well, I uh, certainly want to thank you, Mr. Hovick, for helping me carry this stuff of mine over. It was real neighborly. Now, if you'll help me put it in my car, I think I can take it from there. Lady, you heard what I said. I told you everything. Told me what? I, I don't think I know what you're talking about. Well, I told you. Rubbish. Haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Uh, Lieutenant Friday, why don't you and your partner just chase along? We don't need you any more that I can see. No, I'm afraid you don't understand, Mrs. Face. You keep out of this, Friday. This now is something personal between Mr. Hovig and myself. 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Face. It's a police matter now. We'll have to take Mr. Hovig downtown. Now, you just hold on a minute. You know as well as I do that he didn't commit any crime. You heard his story. You can't arrest a man just because he loves his daughter. I'm afraid that was the trouble. What do you mean by that? Maybe he loved her too much. On June 5th, trial was held in Municipal Court of the Los Angeles Judicial District, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect pled guilty to the charge of petty theft, one count. Petty theft is punishable by a fine not to exceed $500, or by imprisonment in the county jail for a period of not more than six months, or both such fine and imprisonment. Thank you.